exciting episode of Perpetually Ajar, or should I say the first episode of the decade. Of the decade. Of 2020. The decade. Happy New Year, da, da, guys. Da, 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 da. Happy New Year. It's our first episode of the new year, of the decade, of the season. We have so many exciting updates for you guys. And um, Bo, hmm. do we have a special guest? I don't think so. Actually. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me let me check. There's a curtain right here. Let me let me pull it aside. Hold on. Pay no attention Hello? to the man behind the curtain. Is is anybody here? No. Okay. It's just us. Okay. Well, yeah. That is um, that's one of the first things we wanted to talk to you guys about. But first, let's introduce ourselves. Of course, my name is Katie Johnson, and I am a part of Kruby Productions. I play Weishni, Cinderfall, Penny, Peladonuts, and of course, Velvet the Chocolate Rabbit in Ruby Abridged. I am also a writer for the VR Shorts, a voice actress just overall. And, um, yeah, I do a lot of things here. And I, of course, am a host of Perpetually Ajar. And what do you do, Bo? Uh, I am the voice of Winter and Ilya for Ruby Abridged slash Kruby Productions. I am also the head of the VR short department, the lead director, as you will, uh, as well as uh, part of the writing team for the VR shorts. Um, I am a part of the other podcast that we host, the live stream podcast, uh, Kruby Talk, where we talk about a bunch of different anime series every week. Uh, right now we're covering Ruby. And also a uh, co-host of this uh, this lovely podcast that you guys are listening to. I think that's it. Hooray! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the new year, we tease the fact that there might be some changes to the formatting of the podcast, just overall. But, um, yeah, I wanted to go into that, and I also wanted to let you guys know that I am recovering from being very sick. Oh, Tina Katie. is also... Uh, Tina's also recovering from being very sick, so if you hear me sniffling a little bit or if I'm a little slow today, please forgive me, but I will be back at full force by next week, which is when we will be at um, ALA, which you will be hearing this when we were at a ALA, so that's exciting. But, um, yeah, we've one been of the keeping first Katie changes... And Tina, oh, and we've yes. been keeping Katie and Tina in quarantine because we don't want anyone else to get sick for ALA. <laughs> no, it's really, it's true. Like, I mean, we live far away, so it's pretty easy, yeah. but, like, I have just been on lockdown trying to sleep and heal, and I finally got some antibiotics that are helping, but my voice has been a wreck. It's been a nightmare. I just wanted to work, and now I'm still recovering, but I'm getting there, and so I was very excited that I got to but record But did you die? I honestly almost died, <laughs> but Tina got sent to the ER, so I was like nervous yeah she was she was messaging me she wasn't she wasn't too happy. She was not a happy camper about that. Yeah. She was like, Happy I'm New just, Year to I'm me, really going to the ER. <laughs> yep, we were both at the doctor's on New Year's Day. Like, <laughs> that's always fun. And, yeah, but hopefully she's getting some good meds. I've got some good meds, and we're just going to get medded up, and we're going to, we got our med packs. We're going to get in this. We're going to go into the New Year strong and healthy, hopefully. Heck yeah, let's And to do the it. con. But, yeah. Um, let's go into some of the changes that are going to be happening at Perpetually Ajar. So first off, you guys may have noticed there's no special guest. Um, we are going to be, whenever we do episodes each month, we're only going to have a special guest once a month. And the beginning of the month, we'll have me and Bo going back and forth, answering questions, giving you advice, just so you can kind of get to know us better. Mm -hmm. And we also have added a new segment. Would you like to tell them the name of this new segment, Bo? <sighs> Not really, but I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, so for the record, I said this name as a joke. And Katie, as I said right before we started recording, <laughs> mine and Katie's friendship is summarized by two statements. Katie, no. Katie, yes. And so this was one of those uh, moments where I was like, huh, what if we ask each other questions we've always wanted to know about each other and call them... Winterrogation questions. Ba -da -ba. So now we've got two segments that are Schneister name puns. You're welcome. Yes, it's it's the best. No one and I think it's going to open up some fun avenues for just us to like get to know each other, but also for the audience to get to know us. And like we just want to give you guys advice, too. And we're going to be having, of course, our three Weissbreakers, then two interrogation questions. And we are narrowing the fan questions down to one question. So, you guys, if you have a really good question, you got you to gotta let us know and we're going to have to pick it out. Because we want to make sure that we answer your questions, but we also just want to have fun, too. So, we're going to test it out. And one last change is 
we came to the decision that um, we're going to be doing this podcast in seasons. So the season that you heard was season one, and we're going to be doing 10 episode seasons. So hello, everyone. Welcome to season two of Perpetually Ajar. Hell <laughs> yeah. Are we, maybe we should, I feel like maybe on the podcast isn't the best time, but maybe like just like adding something to the title card to like an update. Mm. That's true. I think that we, might we be can, cool we can work since on that. we officially have multiple seasons now. Yes. We're, All we're, right. We're technically caught up with Ruby Abridged now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> this is a lot. This is this is too much. Too I, much. I can't handle all of this information coming at me at once. That sounds very exciting. It's just oh, it's so nice to have like some changes going into the new year because I think I think it's important like as you move forward, you see what works, you see what doesn't, you try to learn and grow. And we really want this podcast to be something that's exciting for you guys and also exciting for us. And so we hope that these changes implemented will kind of add something new or add something more fun. And if you have suggestions, of course, we'd love to hear them. Always comment below maybe your answer to questions or questions that you have Mm -hmm. or any advice or any cool things you want to say. We love reading them. Yeah, definitely. I I literally like... I usually wait about an hour and a half or so, uh, you know, give people a chance who, who the few the few people that I think like actively are like, ooh, new episode, click, gonna listen to it now. Yeah. Uh, give people, because some people like to comment like as they're listening, which I kind of like, to be honest. It's just, it's funny yeah. to see, you know, people like uh, just reacting throughout it. Um, and I, I read every single comment though, like every single comment on every video I have absolutely seen, so... I like mm-hmm. seeing what you guys have to say about what we're talking about and what we're doing and the shenanigans that we're putting you all through. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, super exciting. Yeah. Some some cool stuff. Well, before we get into our creepy news corner, um, I just want to know, Bo, what have you been up to? Oh, man. Um, my Well, aside from the numerous reshoots of Nondescript Winter Holiday 2, yes. I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> I really don't want to talk about it. Uh, I have been watching The Mandalorian. Um, Me too. It's good, good shit. Um, it's some good shit. And I've also been watching The Witcher. I just finished all of The Witcher episodes on Netflix, and I really loved it. I've only played Witcher three, but um, I'm like obsessed with Henry Cavill as as Geralt of Rivia. And the mm-hmm. actress that they have playing Yennefer, she's, like, beautiful and has, like, these... I don't know if... They have to be edited to a degree, but she has purple eyes, and they're mm-hmm. just the most striking thing I've ever seen. And I'm just, like... Like, I, I think that's kind of the point of her character, though, is because Yennefer's a character that uses her, like, her position and her, like, sexuality to manipulate people. And yeah. part of it is, like, the gaze that she holds with them. And so, like, her gaze is just so striking that I guess that's kind of the effect she's supposed to have. Anyways, yeah. I'm gay. Um, <laughs> I It's really good. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm sad that we have to wait, like, a whole ass year for another season. But, mm-hmm. yeah, what have you been up to, Katie, other than your well, crazy-ass trip? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I went to Italy. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, you and dabbed yeah, in while front I, of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I did. <laughs> I dabbed in front of the Dabbing Tower of Pisa, oh and I have to tell you guys, there are so many shirts out there of of dabbing cartoon characters next to the Leaning Tower of Pisa. They're cursed. <laughs> like I saw a shirt of Popeye the Sailor Man dabbing, and I didn't need to see that. I I didn't need that in my life in my brain, but it exists. And I bought a shirt of Mona Lisa dabbing. So are you gonna bring it to ALA? I want to see it. Oh my god, I should bring it. I'm, I might. I'm gonna do that. Okay, it is decided. This, this, <laughs> this is, is the way. The way. <laughs> this is the way. I have spoken. <laughs> I have spoken. I have spoken. So yeah, and then as soon as I got back, I got sick. Oof. Rip. And I have been in bed being sick for a minute and I was trying to self-medicate with like allergy medicine that I had because I thought it was like something like that but oh no it I finally got to the doctor and they were like here take some antibiotics you fool like (laughs) so let that be a lesson like sometimes you can just like you know take some mucinex and some cough syrup and it'll be fine but sometimes you need like actual medication (laughs) yeah 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 like nuke it from orbit it's the only way to be sure (laughs) yep so yeah 
That's that's been most of my my week. Oh, I've been listening to a lot of Critical Role. Hell yeah! Because I am determined. I'm so behind. You're gonna catch, to catch up, up before I'm before I catch up. I'm like five episodes I might. behind. I'm on episode seventy two. I don't even know what they're on. I think they're on like eighty seven. Yeah, so I'm. On I like think they're 82. on eighty nine or so. Yeah, I'm on like eighty two or eighty three. I think it was the last yeah. episode I listened to. So you're like, probably gonna I've catch up working. at the rate that you're watching. But I watch it though, like. You, you're able to yeah. listen to it. I sit down and actively like watch the live streams, watch the fights, oh, yeah. and if I miss something, if I miss something cool, and I hear Laura Bailey just screaming about something, I have to go back and rewatch the last like 15 minutes. Oh yeah, so. I I really look forward to the day where I get to where I'll get to be a part of that and like watch the live streams because I I love doing that for the Unexpectables. That's my favorite D and D stream, mm-hmm. and so I'm really excited. To one day get to do that God, and like the, and then the I, live the, critical yeah. role streams are insane. Like I'm so pumped. I want it. And they have giveaways every every time they I go know. into the the halfway from point. Wormwood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wormwood. God, uh, I want Wormwood yeah. stuff so bad. I know. I like they talk about tower. that on the podcast version too. Like the one that you listen to, they always announce who the winner was from for Wormwood. That's cool. Yeah. You have to be in the Twitch stream to enter, though, which is like... Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But... And one day, I will be there. What else What else have I been doing? I have been... I don't know. Oh, I have been going back and forth visiting my dad in LA, like, constantly oh, yeah. for the last, like, month and a half. I went and visited him. So... I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about it, Katie, because... Ooh, talk about you it. Were, talk you about were in it, Italy when this happened. Talk so my dad that. told me about a week before Christmas. He was like, hey, I want you to come out for for Christmas. And I was yeah. like, okay, understandable. Um, my roommates are going to be gone, like, from, like, December 26th, basically, through to, like, the new year. So I was like, so I need to be back, yeah. like, the day after Christmas. And he was like, well, so-and-so wants to have dinner on Christmas. And I was like... And I have something that I have to do editing wise here and I don't want to bring my computer out there again. So mm-hmm. I'm going to just be out there for Christmas, like for Christmas. So I took yeah. what's normally an eight and a half hour bus ride out to Vegas the morning of Christmas. I oh got on God. the bus at 345 in the morning, got there by like noon at the latest because there's a couple yeah. stops and whatnot. Yeah. And, you know, hung out with my dad Went to dinner and was back on the bus to come home by 2 a.m. the next morning. Holy fuck. But then, but then, there had apparently been a freak snowstorm (gasps) out in the middle of the desert. And our bus got stuck in the snow. (gasps) Yo. And so what was normally an eight and a half hour trip turned into nearly a 13 hour trip. Because we were stuck in the snow until they were able to come and, like, help push the bus so we could move. So Wow. Yeah. I was very mad. (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah. So that was a thing. I'm probably never taking the bus again. Or at least not that bus company. I'm not going to say the company because that's not what I do. But I'm definitely never taking that company again. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I've only heard bad stories about who you're talking about too from you you know this was my first time really ever having a horrible experience like i've had like eh experiences before but most of the time it could be drowned out by like listening to music or like just going to sleep but like yeah. we were just on the bus for so long like i've still been having problems with my legs because i had such bad leg cramps after being stuck on the bus for so long yeah because they were like you know oh don't stand up in the aisles blah 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 even though we weren't moving like, yeah. what, what are we going to do? Like, we're literally like someone could literally have like a heart attack because of a blood clot because they haven't moved in eight hours. Like, yeah, we, we need to be able to stand up, my dude. But yeah, it was yeah. it was kind of an overall horrible experience. And I definitely bitched to my dad. I was like, Dad, I'm never taking the bus out there again. So if you want me to come visit, you're buying me a plane ticket because <laughs> it's a yeah. 45 minute flight from where I live. That is just such a yikes. <sighs> but yeah, that was that was a thing. And so now I'm just in the I'm I'm riding the hype of getting ready for ALA. That's that's what mm-hmm. I'm doing. I'm very excited we, about we ALA. We vibing. <laughs> yes, and we can talk about ALA in our Kruby News Corner. But why don't you take us away? 
All right. So, welcome everyone to the first uh, issue of Kirby News Corner for season two of Perpetually Ajar. Have some. Have some. I think first off, this is the biggest Kirby News Corner update that we've had so far. Um, I had. I have like an actual like statement, an official statement from one of the department heads. I have some really cool announcements. I think first and foremost. One of the biggest announcements is that Ruby Abridged Volume 2, Chapter 2 is in post-production and is due to be released this month. It should be out this month, January 2020. It is a lot closer than you you think. Um, I've only seen like a handful of of scenes um, from, you know, hanging out with Brian because Brian will just be like, hey, look at this thing that I'm working on. It's so funny. (laughs) Or look at this thing I'm working on. It's so dumb. <laughs> but yes. uh, yeah, so I'm really excited. I got to see um, I got to see the uh, Neptune Weiss interaction. So that was funny. Oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> I'm so pumped. It's 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 looking like it's gonna be good. Everyone's been working so hard to get it done for you guys. I know that you guys have been asking a lot about it, and we've been. I promise you, we have been trying so hard to get it out to you. So it'll be here soon, 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 soon. Almost done. And um, so moving right along to content on the channel, um, I have an official statement from the stream team. Uh, so first off, all good things, all good things, nothing bad, but, um, a quick update for you guys regarding our weekly streams. Our local bird mom, Zazami, has stepped down as head of the stream team to focus on personal projects and has put our resident Spadiglio, aka Steve number three, in charge of streams (laughs) from now on. As a result of this, she will be appearing in less streams than normal, but fret not. Zaz is still a full-fledged member of Kruby and will continue to appear in future videos. She also has agreed to continue hosting our VR chat streams that you guys can't seem to get enough of. Thank you, Zaz, for all the hard work you put into our past streams. You're the best. The stream team as a whole would not be where we are now if not for you. One final major change that is coming to the streams is that they will be bi-weekly now instead of every week. This is to allow us on the stream team to better and more easily plan the streams out weeks and months in advance. Thank you to everyone who tunes into our streams. You guys are what makes this so much fun to do. And that was from Spadiglio, aka Ezio, aka Steve number three. I can't even keep up with how many names that guy has. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, and Zaz is still the voice of our Raven, obviously. So yes. she's she's just kind of taking a step back because she's working on her own stuff. She's kind of uh, doing her own thing on a on another channel, I think. So we'll see what I'm kind of excited to see what she's working on. Um, moving right along, we have a quick reminder that we have Ruby Talk every Sunday on the channel at 11 p.m. Eastern. We cover the uh, the current episodes of Ruby as they're coming out. We've got five more episodes this volume. And then we're back on the hiatus again. (laughs) I'm not looking forward to that hiatus. I feel like this hiatus is going to probably be the longest one. I feel like this volume is going to leave off on a point that we're just not going to be happy on. And I'm really worried. I'm scared. (laughs) I'm scared. But uh, yeah, so that's every Sunday. Once Ruby is off season, uh, I I don't know what we've been what we're gonna be covering, but we'll cover something um, in between when Ruby leaves and when it comes back. So keep an eye on uh, on the channel for that. That's again um, every Sunday at 11 p.m. Eastern. Sorry, it's so late, but most of us are on the West Coast, so like it's only 8 p.m. for us. Sorry, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> moving along, we've got nondescript Winter Holiday Two is officially in post production. You know, it's funny because I said that like two episodes ago when we had Annika on and Mm -hmm. that was filmed or that was recorded like right before Thanksgiving or right after Thanksgiving I can't remember when it was but I was like oh yeah well hopefully by the time you know the next episode comes out it'll be out already and blah 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 and boy was I wrong because Nondescript Winter Holiday 2 has turned into Murphy's Law 2 um, <laughs> and something that I'm going to personally divulge because it's my choice to do so as the head of the VR short department, we are going to be showing a sneak peek of the first scene from Nondescript <gasps> Winter Holiday 2 at one of our panels at Anime Los Angeles. Woo! And 
if all things go according to plan, you can also expect Nondescript Winter Holiday 2 to be out later this month. Official date, TBD, TBA, to be announced. TBA. TBA. Um, but yeah, um, if you're on our Patreon, you will be able to watch that preview that we show at ALA. So keep an eye out on that if you haven't already pledged. I'm going to be talking more about the Patreon and more about ALA in just a moment. But yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to see it. Everyone's worked really hard on Unscript Winter Holiday too. So here's hoping everything continues to go smoothly from here on out. Knock mm-hmm. on wood. <laughs> Knock on wood. But speaking of Anime Los Angeles, Kruby will be hosting a grand total of five panels over the weekend at the convention. <laughs> Katie, I'm so excited for you to come to ALA. It's going to be so I'm much so, fun. Oh, I'm so excited to be there. And I'm going to be hosting the Table Reads panel. Yes. Uh, which I know Bo's about to read the name of all the panels, but I'm really excited about the one I'm hosting because I have some great material for you guys to hear. <laughs> yeah, and we're really excited. I read some of the stuff that she has planned, and it's it's going to be it's gonna be a hoot and a half, let me tell you. <laughs> so Kirby Productions uh, panel information can be found on the official Anime Los Angeles schedule on the website AnimeLosAngeles.org uh, But for your information here, we have the Intro to 3D Modeling panel Thursday, January 9th from 12pm to 1.30pm at the Lake Silverwood, bleh, Lake Silverwood Live Programming 3 room Then, Friday, January 10th at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the Lake Gregory Live Programming 2 room, we have Ruby Abridged with Kruby, which is going to be kind of more of a broad panel. It's not going to just be Ruby Abridged. All of our different departments that we'll have there will kind of be showcasing stuff, showing stuff off. That will be the panel that you'll be able to see the Nondescript Winter Holiday 2 preview at. Um... So definitely uh, come stop by if you're there. We may have some stuff to give out, some free swag. You never know. Uh, Moving right along. Also Friday, uh, January 10th at 6.45 p.m. to 11 or sorry, to 8.15 p.m. Also in the same room, Lake Gregory Live Programming 2. We have the Did You Hear That? A sound design panel that will be hosted by none other than our own Brian Hubbard, a.k.a. Hubbard Audio, a.k.a. Niptune. Um... Vagina sales. <laughs> Vagina sales. Yeah, I wasn't going to say it, but then I was like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> but um, yeah, and also uh, with, I believe, Cole. I believe Cole will be on that, and I think Annika will be on that one as well, talking kind of about the process of going through like recording, you know, directing voice actors, doing sound design, talking a little bit about uh, music composition, all kinds of stuff like that. So if that's something that interests you, you should definitely come check it out. Saturday, January 11th at 6.15 to 7.45 p.m. in also Lake Gregory Live Programming 2, we have the Table Reads with Kruby. Do you want to talk a little bit about that one, Katie? Yes. So I don't want to give too much away. You guys Mm -hmm. really need to show up if you want to have the ultimate time. But um, we're going to have a few of Kruby's actors that are able to be at um, at the con up on stage or table, wherever, and I have prepared some scripts that we will be reading for you all, and there might also be a little bit of audience participation, where if anyone in the audience has a good impression that they can do, we might ask for your assistance. If nobody wants to, we do have a backup plan for that as well, but it's always fun to to include people, because I know that there's lots of people in the voice acting community especially that just want a chance to show off sometimes, you know, and sometimes... As a parody group like we are, impressions are a lot of what we do. Mm-hmm. And um, impressions don't necessarily make you an actor, but like they are something that actors utilize all the time. And it's very fun to do, and there's nothing wrong with showing those skills every now and then. So if, if there's actors out there or just people out there that want to have fun doing impressions with us... We would we would love to have you at the panel and maybe give you an opportunity to to play around on a stage because like yeah I've got some fun little scenes picked out I also had a movie generated script of something <laughs> that's very silly that all of our actors will be reading and it will be it'll be very fun and I really hope to see you there I'm really excited the last panel that I was in that Katie hosted was our 18 plus panel at AWA and uh, <laughs> boy was that one lit. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that might have been the most fun I've ever had at 645 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just you wait, Bo. Oh, no. I'm scared now. <laughs> but this time it's, it's 615 awesome. in the evening. So. Yes. Much better time. Oh, yeah. I'll actually be awake for this one. <laughs> yes. Correct. But uh, our last panel that we have is the Ruby Trivia panel, which I will be a part of. Um, mm hmm which is Saturday, January 11th at 8.30 p.m. to 10 o'clock p.m. in the OCC Meeting Room 200. And that one, I believe, is our biggest uh, our biggest room. So hopefully you guys come hang out. It's not going to be exclusively Kruby. Um, it's actually not going to be Kruby at all. It's going to be actual Ruby World of Remnant canon show trivia. Um a lot of us have been working really hard on coming up with the questions, kind of quizzing each other, seeing if we can throw each other off on some of the questions, seeing, kind of testing how much mm. each other knows. Uh, there's five of us that are working on the questions for it and kind of coordinating that panel. So I'm really excited for that one. That one's going to be fun. But remember, if you guys would like to see us at a convention near you, you can request us as guests by submitting our name and our contact email to the convention. Uh, please make sure that you do direct the convention or whoever you're trying to get in contact with us to Team Kruby, that's T-E-A-M-K-R-W-B-Y at gmail.com so that that way our team can get in contact with them to hopefully work something out. Just please keep in mind that simply requesting us for a convention does not guarantee our attendance because travel arrangements, rooming arrangements, all of that does play a factor into if we're able to attend a convention. If it's somewhere yes. in kind of like the southeast area of the U.S., like it's probably pretty, pretty likely because a lot of us are from that yeah. area. But, you know, if it's something like Anime Boston or like Emerald City Comic Con, that might be a little bit harder to to arrange. Yeah. But we want to try. We want to try to make it to more conventions that you guys actually want to see us at. So, you know, never hurts. Never hurts to submit it. You know, help us out. For let's, sure. let's try and get our get our convention list a little bit more. A little bit more. Uh, what's the word? varying Ex we've we've yeah varying broadened yeah broadened because you know last year was the first time we went to ALA uh, I've been attending ALA for like I think like 10 years now and so last year was a lot of fun it was just kind of like on a whim hey guys let's do ALA and then last second a lot of people decided to kind of come out for it so that'll be really exciting but yeah uh one that I want to try and get us into this year either as as guests or just to go is I really want to do Fanime up in San Jose because that's Ooh, literally yeah. my favorite anime convention to go to so heck yeah who knows but moving right along I've only got a couple more things and then I'm done <laughs> I told you this is gonna be right. a long one <laughs> oh yeah um please do not forget to check out our patreon again as we mentioned earlier we have a lot of exclusive and early access to our content um we post a lot of behind the scenes stuff as well um you'll have access early access to stuff like the ruby uh comic dubs vr funny moments our ruby vr shorts and of course the ruby abridged episodes so you know go ahead take a look at it if you haven't already um we have a few different tiers available um, you know, just th thank you for checking it out. Even if you just do that, like we absolutely appreciate every, every bit of support that you guys have, you know, your subscriptions on YouTube, your follows on Twitter, all of it, it helps so much and we really appreciate it. And we love making the content that we do for you guys. So thank you so much for that support. Um, as always, if you aren't already in our public Discord server, make sure to hop on in it. It's free to sign up for Discord, uh, which can sometimes be... A little, a little daunting for the poor admin team because <laughs> it's free to sign up for Discord. <laughs> but um, a good amount of the Kruby staff are in the are in the public server, and we hang out in the voice chats from time to time. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a really fun little hangout session where we were in the voice chat, and we were. Um, we were reading like scenes from the episodes from like actual Ruby episodes and we were reading mm -hmm. like VR short scripts and stuff like that and just doing impressions and everything. And that was like me and Tina and Nicole and uh, I almost called him Neptune, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> but because uh, he, he just messaged me. So I saw his like his name and I just thought Neptune. Aww. But um, yeah, so we have a lot of fun there. Come hang out if, if that's something that sounds like you guys would like to do. And um, 
Uh, yeah, that's really that's really kind of it. Happy New Year, everyone. Here's to our first full year, full calendar year of Perpetually Ajar. And don't forget Woo! that we have new episodes out every other Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Back to mm-hmm. you, Katie. All right. So, yeah, that's all of our updates. We have a lot going on behind the scenes, as you can tell. Mm-hmm. And we're very excited to share all of it with you when the time is right. But in the meantime, let us break in to our Weisbreakers. Okay. ba 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 Okay. So. I didn't read them number one. <laughs> Ooh, excellent. <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. Would you rather be able to run as fast as a cheetah or fly but only as fast as a tortoise. I'd want to run as fast as a cheetah. Yeah. I miss I miss being able to run. I used to do like sprinting. I'm afraid of mm-hmm. heights. So flying I mm. feel like would just be like if I could fly fast, it wouldn't be a problem because I could just be like noom and be done with it. But flying really yeah. slow is like I have to suffer through the heights. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of torn because on one hand, running as fast as a cheetah would be great for like safety reasons in terms of like, you know, if I need to run away from a bad guy or like, I don't know. I see a lot of benefits from being able to run fast, but the flying as a as slow as a tortoise thing sounds really fun. Like, I don't think I'd go very high. <laughs> you just and be obviously, <laughs> Like, and if I'm ever in a really tall if I'm on top of a tall building or something, I never have to worry about falling too fast because I can just be like, boom, I'm flying. I'm floating down. I'm, I'm falling with style. Yeah, I was I'm about like, to say, you're not flying. You're yeah, falling with flying style. Flying with style. Yeah, I can just do that. So I would never have to worry. Like, heck, even if I'm in a plane, I would never have to worry about if the plane's going to crash. I could just jump out the window and float down to safety. <laughs> Fuck all like, of you. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like trying to think of situations. I mean... I think running as fast as a cheetah would help me in more situations that I'm in because I'm on the ground more so than the sky. Mm -hmm. But the potential I would have with being able to slowly float up like like Steven Universe, like his little floaty powers, like that would just be so fun and chill and like uh, I could go like climbing and stuff and do all that cool stuff that like I was always kind of nervous about, but like I would never have to worry about breaking a back falling because I can float. Oh man, <laughs> jeez. Yeah, I think I think running as fast as man. I'm just so on my like Harriet like bullshit from Volume Seven of Ruby because like I just yeah. love I love that they've made a sprinter character kind of like the Flash. Like yeah. I really miss running. I I haven't been able to do any kind of like actual like kind of competitive running since I hurt my knee when I was younger. But like, yeah, yeah, I'd want to be able to run as fast as a cheetah. I think that's that's what I'll stick with. Hmm. I also just thought about the fact that as I'm getting older, if my leg ever hurts or something, if I can fly as fast as a tortoise, I could just low key float everywhere if I wanted to. Now, you see, they made a movie about that, Katie. It's called Wally. Mm, that's true. <laughs> and we know how that ended up. <laughs> this It's too much of a risk. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have to take running as fast as a cheetah. See, that'll I'm help so, me in most situations that I'm in danger. I must just have my, my Ruby OC's power of persuasion because I'm always able oh. to at least turn someone <laughs> to my side. I mean, I was... You know, actually, that's a good point because you're the the one that you wanted, the power that you wanted was just to tip them over. And like, I was pretty on the edge there. Mm-hmm. Like, see, there you go. I wasn't leaning necessarily one way or the other. Pow- well, I might have been leaning a little more towards power. Cheetah, well, I, I did used to be on debate team in high school. So like, oh, nice. Like, I used to be on speech team too. arguing. Arguing my point is something that I do a lot and apparently very mm-hmm. well. <laughs> you do. You do. <laughs> Sometimes well, better than others. I'm glad. Our first question of the year, we agree on. So let's see if these next questions, let's see if we'll have some disagreements. Oh, I'm so, so conflicted about the second one. <laughs> yeah. Would you rather have a lifetime subscription to Netflix or an unlimited gift card to Starbucks? See, as I think I know my answer. Uh, and so I'm going into more like usefulness here. Because, like, as cool as unlimited supply to Netflix would be, you know, unlimited, like, lifetime supply subscription to Netflix, an unlimited gift card to Starbucks could literally keep you fed. Like, as long as Starbucks is a company, 
Like I you would like never here starve to death. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was def I was thinking the exact same thing. Cause like I could buy drinks for my friends. There's so much I could do mm-hmm. with a gift card to Starbucks. And Netflix, I do watch, you know, a fair amount of Netflix, but like I can I do borrow accounts every now and then. But like Starbucks, the possibilities and the joy I could bring of just being like, hey guys, I brought everybody Starbucks. Or like yeah. I'd always have breakfast. Like there's so much potential. Mm-hmm. You'd be everyone's best friend. You'd just be like, here's some Starbucks. <laughs> mm-hmm. God, I want Starbucks. I've I, I almost tell you ordered guys, Jamba oh. Juice earlier. I really wanted yeah. Jamba Juice so bad. And then I was like, I'm really tired, though. Maybe Starbucks? It would be appropriate because I'm talking to Katie and then we always get Starbucks <laughs> like whenever we hang out. So I've been like so sick and anything sugary has made me like, Ugh, I can't like go near it. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it would just make me sick. But I'm starting to. F- to be able to eat it's, sugar again and I'm it's like okay, oh, oh my god because you know what's right next door to our hotel <gasps> a Wendy's oh my god <laughs> yeah it's on Katie just it's nutted. on <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's no oh my god yeah <laughs> catch, catch me and Katie at 2 a.m. in the Wendy's because I'm pretty sure during yeah. ALA that Wendy's is open 24 hours <laughs> I am so pumped. This is the best day ever. Hell yeah. It's going to be great. It's going to be lit. We'll do a live oh stream God, from yes. Wendy's. It'll be great. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> this is this is happening. This is the best. <laughs> but yeah, so I think we're in agreement on that one too, is the unlimited gift card to Starbucks. Like, I, I do yeah. like Starbucks, though. I don't drink coffee mm-hmm. a whole lot. Actually, come to think that- the, I just drink fraps. <laughs> the, yeah, fraps. The last time I had Starbucks was when you and I had Starbucks at Dragon Con, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because I don't drink that. Starbucks all that often. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah, I only get it like for special occasions because I love fraps. They're but, dangerous. Like, if I drink though. those all the time, yeah, they're 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 quite dangerous for this white girl. Like. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> can I can I but read yeah. the next question? Of course, read our final icebreaker. Okay, <laughs> cracks see if we agree. knuckles. Let's do this. Would you rather? Be able to freeze time or travel in time. Now, this is the one that when I picked it out, I was actually, I'm conflicted both ways. Like, I don't have a direction that I'm necessarily leaning towards. I know what I want because it, I kind of have already talked about it in a previous episode. I can't remember when it was. I want to say it or was well, the first episode. Hold on. Before you say your answer, I'm going to look and I'm going to see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think I know what direction I'm leaning in. Um, I want to be able to travel in time. Okay. Because I want to be able to personally go back in time. I know that it would change everything. But I want to stop the burning of the Library of Alexandria. Oh, shit. That's my one goal in life, is to be able to time travel and stop the burning of the Library of Alexandria. Well, dang. Because any historian would probably argue that, that is the most frustrating thing that's ever happened in history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because ignorance. And I just, I love books and I love like information so much that like, it just makes me so sad. I'd also want to see the golden age of piracy. Like I love pirates mm. so much and I think that'd be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Go and sail, live out my Assassin's Creed Black Flag like dreams. Oh my god, I think we're gonna disagree here because uh-huh. I would want to freeze time, and one reason is I don't want the responsibility of they both come with their own sets of responsibilities. Sure, but mm-hmm. traveling back in time gives you too much power, too much control over like other people, etc. Freezing time, the most that it gives you is more prep time. You can't change something that's, like, happened already. But, like, Mm -hmm. if you see something's about to happen, if you're about to be in a situation, you can change your fate, but you won't necessarily fuck up or be able to have too much power over changing other people's fate. So, like, if you're about to be in a car accident, you can freeze, get out of the car, save yourself. Like, you might be able to maybe take the other person out, but, like, you know, you don't get... My question with that, though... Is what if there are limitations to where all you can do is freeze time, but you can't change anything? Um, Because then it's like if you're in a car accident and you freeze time, you're just delaying the inevitable. 
I think I'm going to look at this from the perspective of both of them give you unlimited potential. So, like, for example, time travel, you can travel back in time and change the burning of, you know, the Library of Alexandria. Mm -hmm. I can freeze time. And in that time period, I can do, you know, some stuff that I want. So, like, prep time, for example, I want to sleep some more. I can freeze time and sleep a little bit more. Or I can freeze time and study a little bit more. Like, I think that I want to look at it from that perspective just so okay. we can get the full course of responsibility and and potential power that we might have and get a full scope look at it. Because I think that freezing time would give me just enough of a boost to aid me but not too much responsibility and not too many factors of what if. Because if I have travel in time, then I, then I might not look at things as, as if they have consequences anymore. My, I might just be like, I'm just, I'm just going to go so change it. the Library of Alexandria is really like one, like one of the only things that I would actually want to change. Obviously, like the Holocaust, if I could change that, that'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. You know, like Hitler being a thing, that'd be pretty cool too. Um, but like, uh, really, I just kind of want to be an observer. Like I've always loved mm-hmm. stories about time travelers that aren't yeah. trying to fuck with things that just travel through time to observe, to see yeah. how history played out, how the future plays out. And I kind of want to yeah. be like that. Like I want to be just this time, time traveling nomad, just kind of looking yeah. and watching and just seeing I feel like it might give me, because I, I, I honestly feel kind of such a disconnect from people so much mm-hmm. that I feel like getting to witness so many different <sighs> eras of, of existence from, from, you know, mankind, I feel like maybe it might give me a better appreciation for, like, human interaction and whatnot. Yeah. So that's okay. my thing. Yeah. Yeah. I just would love to sleep a little more. That's fair. I also would love to sleep a little more. But see, and, if uh, I can travel in time, I could just sleep as long as I want and then wake up and be like, oh, man, I slept past my shift. I'm going to just go back in time now and go to my shift early. Yeah. Oh, that's just too much power for me. I just I just wouldn't want that much responsibility because then I, I just really feel like things after a certain point – like, because once you first get a power, you can think to yourself, you know, I'm going to be responsible with this. But over time, as it becomes more convenient, mm-hmm. I feel like people in human history lean into, like, overusing or relying on power when they have it. Yeah. And, and like, that's just a trend in humanity. And I would just be so scared of not thinking anything has consequences. Anytime something bad happens, instead of trying to learn from it, I just go change it because I'm afraid of something bad happening. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I'd just rather be able to have a few more moments to prepare instead of the ultimate ability to control and change. That's fair. Yeah. Well, we finally found one that we were both a little little different on. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, all right. Then let us get into our new segment, our beautiful kind of experimental segment that I think is going to be fun, Winterrogation. So for this segment, we are just going to ask each other some questions and kind of get to know each other. It's going to be kind of an interview interrogation style thing where we both pick questions that we just genuinely want to ask the other person and see what they have to say. Yeah, like something that we've always kind of been curious about each other or something like that. Yeah. So I'm kind of I'm kind of excited. I'm a little I'm a little nervous to see what you have to ask me. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So I'll ask one, then you ask one, and then we can do that back and forth. Because this is our first time doing it. We'll see how it goes timing-wise. And, yeah. So what is something you have accomplished in the last 10 years that you're personally proud of? So it doesn't have to be anything that's, like, you know, on paper, like, Pete, that society would be proud of or anything like something that for you personally was an accomplishment that you made that made you personally proud hmm I think as like as like corny and as like I feel like kind of almost like uh, I don't know how to word it I, I think finally getting to a point where I felt like I was someone that my mom would be proud of yeah. 
I think that's that's probably the thing that I'm most proud of that I've accomplished in the last 10 years was finally reaching a point like I still struggle a lot with like, you know, loving myself. And I mean, who who doesn't really? But um, I still struggle very much with, you know, my own like with not being so self-deprecating all the time. And yeah, and it's really it's really hard not to be sometimes when when things are kind of looking down and whatnot. But no matter how yeah. bad things get for me, I do genuinely still feel like I've become a person that my mom would be proud of, that my mom would be able to look at and be like, you know, that's my kid and I'm proud of them. Like they're doing good. They're doing right by me. So yeah. I think that's probably I think that's probably what I would say for that one. That's really beautiful, Bo. Oh, that's gay. <laughs> Heck. Well, um, now it's your turn. Ask me a question. OK. So this was something that actually, so I originally didn't have a question yet, actually. I was having a really hard time coming up with a question. And then I was watching uh, some videos on Tumblr last night, and I came across one of my favorite instruments. Um, and it made me wonder, what's an instrument that you've always wanted to learn? Guitar. Guitar. Nice. Because I love Taylor Swift, <laughs> and I've always wanted to be able to play every one of her songs on guitar. That's fair. That is absolutely I, fair. Yeah. I just, I love the sound of guitar. Like, I love acoustic sounds. Honestly, a close second is piano mm -hmm. or, like, keyboard. Like, those two instruments, like, they produce the, the sounds that just make me, like, uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love yeah. I love those. Um, violin is one of my favorite instruments as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, that's that's cool. I didn't I didn't know like guitar guitar is a lot of fun. I've grown yeah. up around like guitar players, so I feel like I kind mm -hmm. of I kind of almost take guitars for granted just because like everyone in my family either plays the guitar or the ukulele or the banjo. Yeah, so it's just something that I've always been around. So yeah, it's always I love. Um, I love singing a lot mm -hmm. and I've always, I had a friend that was really good at playing guitar and whenever we'd get together, he would just start a beat and I would just sing and it was so fun. And I loved the idea of just being able to make music anywhere I go Yeah, definitely. and like always be able to have the backing thing for singing. Cause my favorite version of any song is an acoustic, just like chill chilled down slowed down version of something where you just sing it all prettily and it has just a just a piano in the background or just yeah. a guitar in the background like and so if I could just do that on the fly that would just be beautiful and that's why if I was willing to give it the time that would be the one cool awesome yeah all right so next winterrogation question for you what is something that I don't know about you? Who? And I think I'm going to I think I'm going to have I'm going to copy you on this one. I'm going to ask you this one okay. back. So, if you want go ahead okay. and start thinking about it. Um, okay. Hmm. Something that you don't know about me. I'm trying to think of something that'll just make you go, "What? No." Yeah. Cuz I want it I want it to be something that's like shocking. Hmm. Oh man, this is gonna be five minutes of me thinking. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to. Uh, mm. I'm trying to think of stuff that I haven't just like offhandedly mentioned before in the podcast too. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, usually my go-to for this one is Clown College, but you already know about that. <laughs> I know about that one. Um. Oh, I had one and then I lost it. Oh, I have one. Um, okay. The school that I went to uh, for my junior and senior year um, was an adult mm -hmm. education center, technically. Um, yeah. And had a lot of, uh, it was kind of, in the district that I was in, it was kind of known for being the place that a lot of the troublemakers got sent to because they just didn't get along with any of the other schools. Um, yeah. I was there because I fell really far behind in my schooling. Um, and so it was it offered like the fastest way for me to catch up on my credits and whatnot. But yeah. for my junior and senior year, I ended up like becoming really good friends with my homeroom teacher. 
and the two of us ended up talking about how she felt like if the school had an art department of some sort, it might help the kids better connect with, you know, being at school and might give them some kind of nice creative outlet because they didn't have any kind of like electives or anything like that. And so the two of us actually put together a like kind of bit of groundwork and a layout and the foundation for now. Here we are, you know, like almost almost 10 years later since I grad or since I left um they now are still using the groundwork uh what we laid for their their like thriving theater department they have now yeah so basically i that's i guess that's something you didn't know is i helped found a theater department for the high school i went to for junior and senior year oh that's really nice yeah well mine is um Mine is also related to kind of an educational thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And this is something that I haven't told a lot of people. There's maybe like less than a handful. You're about to tell the internet, so. (laughs) Yes, I'm about to tell the internet. But um, it used to be something that was very like important and like made me, like at the time I was very insecure about it. But now I'm just like, it's whatever. Mm -hmm. So the first time I ever took my driver's test, like to get my driver's license, I failed Like we and we had to drive an hour and a half in order for me to take the driver's test. We had to wait an hour before they'd let me like take it. You know, and I was I was there. I was nervous. I was anxious. My dad had taken off to like take me and I get in the car and I roll every stop sign because I'm so nervous. Like and I and the driver like maybe. 40 seconds into the driver's test just says stop take me back you failed oh and I was like okay and then as soon as I get in the car with my dad I start crying because I was like oh my gosh like I knew all my friends were gonna make fun of me Mm -hmm. because at the time like I was nervous to tell the friends that I had at the time about any screw ups or whatever because they, they they felt very judgy. Like it felt like I was in a very judgy place at the time. Yeah. And I was so nervous and I was like, please don't tell my don't tell my friends like that I took this test and like don't like don't say anything. Like and I had to tell I told mom that. And at the time I was so like, Oh my gosh, like this is the end of the world. I'm such a screw up. Every, but everything now I'm feels just like, like the end of the world when you're that age. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now I'm just like, Psh, whatever. What what's fine? And the next time I went to take that test, you best believe I stopped, looked both ways twice before I kept driving at every one of those stops. <laughs> like stop signs like so I learned my lesson and at the time I was just so insecure and even tell and even talking about it made me so nervous and now I'm just like Psh, it's it's you're it's fine like no one fucking cares <laughs> man I I wish I could drive I you know like a week before I was gonna go out for my my permit when I was 17 yeah um, I got into a really bad car accident Um, I was in the passenger seat and I actually, Mm -hmm. um, my head went through the windshield. Um, my God. Yeah. It was really bad. Like I probably should have died to be completely honest. Um, but, and the worst part is it was like a month after my mom had passed away too. So it was like, my my dad was so rattled by it. Um, understandably so. Um, but it just kind of really scared me. Like, I get so nervous in cars now, like, still to this day. Like, I have memory loss from that car accident. So it's, yeah. like, it's cars scare the hell out of me. Buses, no, not as sure. much, just because I feel like I'm basically in a tank. I'm also higher up than, like, where, like, even if a car were to, like, straight up T-bone the bus, like, I'm up above where the yeah. car would be. I've been yeah. in a car accident in a bus, actually, at um, Anime Expo. Oh, my gosh. Ye- I'm learning so many new things about you. Yeah. A few years ago, I was in a bus. It was a <laughs> shuttle from the hotel to the convention at Anime Expo. And yeah. this this taxi just completely straight up T-boned the bus. Like, just didn't even stop. It wasn't, like, super, like, Holy fast fuck. or anything. But it just almost seemed like he deliberately targeted the bus. Like, it seemed like he was actively trying to crash into us. Wow. And... And AX ended up, like, getting all of our information, and then, like, three months later, after they had, like, you know, the whole settlement and everything with, like, the taxi company, I got an email, 
And it was like, here's four free complimentary Anime Expo badges for next year. And I was like, oh, okay, that's one way to make up for it. <laughs> huh. Well, all so, right. So, I mean, shoot. You know, I ended up bringing, like, my best friend at the time and my dad because he was always like, oh, I've always wanted to see what these conventions are like. But, you know, it's so mm-hmm. expensive. And so I took him to go and, and see what it was like and everything. And I think I gave one of them to another friend of mine who was trying to bring a friend with them. Yeah. But it was just, <laughs> I have the worst experience with cars, man. That's, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It makes me really nervous too because I don't often travel the the freeway that I got in the bad car accident on, but in yeah. order to get to ALA, it's the only road out there. Mm. So I always am like yeah. I always need to make sure that I'm in a car that I trust the driver. Luckily, I trust sure. Annika. I've been, I've been, oh yeah, I've actually been in, in a quote unquote. She considers it a car accident. Been in a car accident oh my with gosh. Annika. <laughs> Oh, my God. But it wasn't actually a car accident. It was more the tire exploded on our car. Yeah. But she's still just like, I can't believe we got in an accident our first time hanging out. And I'm like, Annika, your car, your tire exploded. And she's like, we could have crashed. And I'm like, but we didn't. Like, <laughs> That's such an Annika thing. This episode is titled Oversharing <laughs> by Bo. No, I'm kidding. Oversharing. I mean... <laughs> I do. I do like that title. Oh, no. Here we go. Season two, Perpetually Ajar Oversharing. (laughs) Oversharing. I mean, Um, what's something else we can overshare? Honestly, there was another thing that I was going to say for the something you don't know about me. I was going to say when I lost my virginity. But, you know, I'm going to save that one. (laughs) We'll save that one. That'll just be a question. When did you lose your virginity? When did you lose your virginity? (laughs) Oh, man. Because, I mean, you know. That's it. That's that's that. definitely a story for the for the history books that I'm not oh, yeah. entirely sure I'm willing to share on perpetually ajar. You know that's fair. I've probably because, already shared because the, mine on my other podcast. Specifically, it's because but. that person. I don't know that they listen to perpetually ajar, but the person uh, that I did with uh, no follows the channel. So, oh wow! <laughs> I definitely don't want to tell that story. Well, you don't have to name names. Yeah, but they, I, yeah, maybe. Well, not. yeah, they they would know though. They would know. It, yeah, it's a story. So this though. could have really quickly turned into a very oversharing podcast, but I didn't. I spared you. I I shared one of my insecurity stories instead, even though my virginity story also deals with insecurity. Hooray! My man, uh, mine. <laughs> mine is the complete opposite of that like it's it's a story i love telling because it's so funny but just oh, for, wow. for their kind of like you know privacy sake like i haven't been yeah be okay I'll, I'll ask them i'll ask them if it's cool if i share that story and just leave out their name um, well i mean it's your story as well like if you want to share something you're allowed to do that you just don't you know tell people details that would you know like if, you don't call somebody how, out. How, like, how about this, guys? If you really want these stories, let us know in the comments. And maybe the <laughs> next episode, no, probably not the next episode, but maybe yeah, in the we'll future, see. we'll we'll share these incredibly... My story is actually very <laughs> romantic, but also like sad, but also nice. Mine like, is absolutely it's, it's, not romantic. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, mine, because mine, <laughs> mine starts with a panic attack and ends with happy tears. Oh, man. It mine is a roller coaster. Have, so yeah, uh, guys, you got to leave a comment if you want to hear it. Have you ever read that post on uh, Tumblr about <laughs> the guy who thought he killed his girlfriend because she like had such a good climax that she yes. passed out? <laughs> yes. Oh my it's, god. It's just like how my boyfriend thought his dick killed me. <laughs> oh my god. I, I think I read that. Yeah. It's so funny. I love reading those kinds of stories. <laughs> Uh, and these are the this is the energy we're bringing into the new year, guys. We're just like pumped to be here. We want to share all the fun things with you. Yeah, you know, definitely. ask us ask us some fan questions, and you know maybe you'll get some advice on how you can lose your virginity. <laughs> no, if virginity is <laughs> no. <laughs> that's it's a social construct that doesn't can, matter. Can that be can that be the title? <laughs> since it's since it's you and me, can it be Katie? No, Katie. Yes, <laughs> Katie. No, Katie. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> You know, um, I'm here for that too. Uh, but also, don't let society tell you tell you what to do with your body. Virginity is not real. Nothing's real. We nothing is reality. Uh, you could do what you want. The with who you want. 
We're living in the Matrix. Um, I did want to share before we move on to the fan questions. Um, oh, yeah. The instrument question came from, I, I literally spent like four hours last night. Have you ever heard of a hurdy-gurdy? No. Okay. After this, I'm going to definitely show you the hurdy-gurdy real quick because it's the most beautiful, magnificent instrument you will ever see. Um, oh, my God. It's this like box that has strings on it but you don't strum the strings it's got buttons that you press the buttons on and it's got a crank and you crank it while you're pressing the buttons and it almost sounds like a violin but it's not it's called a hurdy-gurdy it's an old renaissance uh instrument okay and it's literally my favorite sound like it's honestly my favorite sound like ever okay so it's really cool but yeah, oh, hell yeah. That, that's where that that question about the instrument came from, because I was like, this is literally if I could learn how to play the hurdy gurdy, I would want to learn how to play the hurdy gurdy. That is such a fun word too. like if you were to play any instrument, I could see it being the hurdy gurdy. Yep. And it's just like there's so few people that know what a hurdy gurdy is. And I'm just like, it's the most magnificent thing ever. <laughs> hmm. Well, now I want to hear it. You'll you'll have to you'll have to pull up a video when we're at ALA. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, though. Fan question time. Mm -hmm. Our fans have been in the wings long enough. This question comes from, honestly, I'm just going to say it, one of Perpetually Ajar's number one fans. We love you, Sugar Rush. Absolutely. This question comes from them, and it says, so my question is, what is your New Year's Eve resolution, and do you think you will stick to it? So, I don't... Yeah, you go first. I, I have a thing... I don't do New Year's resolutions very often. Yeah. Because I never fulfill them. Yeah. Um, so like I, I kind of fail at that pretty miserably. Um Yeah. I would say if I if I had to pick one kind of now on the spot, something that I hope to do this year is to take myself more seriously. Yeah. As it, you know, that might surprise some people because apparently I seem like I just take myself too seriously sometimes. But honestly, mm-hmm. I really don't. I really don't take yeah. myself seriously at all. And um, I think that I owe it to myself to do so. So if I did have a goal for this year, it would be to take myself more seriously. Huh. That is beautiful, Bo. Oh, thank you. What about you? I really like that. So when it comes to the idea of a New Year's resolution... It used to be one when I was younger that that I would do. I would like write something down and you know I'd do all the formalities. But as I've as I've gotten older, one thing that I've kind of thought is that as cheesy as it sounds, like you should always be making goals that you strive to meet. And mm-hmm. we overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in more time. And sometimes or not sometimes, but like I think that I'm con I'm one thing that I want to keep doing is I want to start writing down the goals that I have the short term and the long term. And it doesn't necessarily matter how long it takes me to meet them. As long as I meet them eventually, I'm not going to put that much pressure on myself. Like I'm going to have some deadlines. Sure. But like, I don't think I have one resolution for the year, but I do have a resolution in general Mm -hmm. of, I want to start, really being more specific with my goals and charting out when I want to meet them and how I want to meet them or just charting them out in general. Cause, cause I've, I've been doing this thing where I have goals and I'm, you know, consistently bit by bit meeting little bits of them, but like there really is power in putting something out there and, and saying it or writing it down. And I, I need to start doing that. So I guess if, if I were to sum that up as a new year's Eve resolution, that resolution is to be more specific with my goals. And that is something that I've planned on starting. And I think that I will achieve that. No, oh, I like that. I I kind of I kind of thought of something on a more like kind of like physical, like there's actually like a physical proof of me doing this rather yeah. than just like, oh, take myself more seriously, not to put that down. But I posted about it in yeah. my in my Discord server actually, is I really want to start holding myself more accountable to the content that I create for my small fan base that I have. 
Um, yeah. And I want to start streaming on a more regular schedule, like doing like, you know, even if it's like only I, I love streaming like every day. It's literally how I make my living, like my personal gaming streams and whatnot and my reactions and all of that. Like, yeah, the donations I make from that are what keeps me fed and keeps me alive. Um, so it's I, I want to I want to start I want to do a better job at putting forth the effort that is deserving of that support from people because this this volume of ruby has been really my reactions have been really lackluster um and i feel really bad about that and i actually invested in a new camera um to be able to do better quality recordings for them and then also to use like at ala and at other conventions that we're at um it's a pretty nice camera it got approved by the video editing department so yeah yeah so that's cool Um, and I just really want to start, I want to start, I guess it kind of goes into taking myself more seriously. Like people, people keep messaging me and telling me that they really enjoy my content and they, they want to support me and that they really like what I do. And I feel like it just, it, I I don't take it seriously enough. Like it still just kind of feels like this is a hobby that I'm doing and I want to start treating it more like, like a job and taking it seriously. So I guess it kind yeah. of plays back into that whole concept. So yeah. Okay. Th- well, heck yeah. We hope that that answers your question, Sugarish. Mm-hmm. Blah. The new year is going to have a lot of awesome stuff going on. Heck yeah. And I'm really excited to to get better so that I can just get started on it. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I'm so excited for mm-hmm. ALA. Like yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm so pumped. Like I just want to see everybody. I have so much happening at ALA. Like I have friends that I didn't even know were gonna be there that are gonna be coming, and I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna have too many people to hang out with. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's <coughs> it's pretty fun. For I mean, I would say it's about it's about the same size as AWA. Um, yeah, but it's it definitely doesn't feel as like condensed as AWA. AWA was like AWA yeah, kind of yeah. felt really like crowded and condensed. ALA is not yeah. usually that crowded. Okay, like it's a little bit more open. Well, I am excited to see it regardless. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, so where can they find you, Bo? Well, as always, you guys can find me on Twitter at b e a u f r o m k r w b y. That's Bo from Kruby. Um, I've been having a lot of fun kind of doing the full switch over there. Like I really don't post on Facebook or Tumblr anymore. I've almost exclusively switched over to posting on Twitter and I have a lot of fun liking and retweeting stuff. It took a little getting used to, but I kind of like how, how casual it is, how easy it is to just kind of go through and share people's stuff and whatnot. Yeah. Um, you can also find me on Twitch, which is again, where I do most of my personal work at uh, twitch.tv forward slash CB Cosplay. That's C-B-C-O-S-P-L-A-Y. Uh, I do a lot of gaming streams, a lot of League of Legends as of late because I'm just back on my League of Legends bullshit. Um, mm-hmm. And then also live reactions to like panels and stuff like that and kind of some hangout streams and crafting streams whenever I have a commission for cosplay stuff. And then yeah. also my Discord server, the Crimson Raiders. Uh, you can find a link for it in the description on my Twitch and also, I believe, on my Twitter as well. Um, I'll actually just go ahead and start regularly tweeting out a link to it probably once a week so that people can have access to it a little bit easier. But Yay. yeah, where can they find you, Katie? You can find me at Connie Day Official on Twitter and Instagram, K A N I D A Y Official. You can also find me at Connie Day Cosplay on Facebook, and you can find me at Connie Day on YouTube if you want to go hear some song covers that I did a while back. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> and um, you can find me on Kirby Productions, of course. You can find me at Weird Flex, but OK Podcast, where I host another podcast. Uh, it's me and Jordan Jack's Blade Downs, and we have a Comedy Weebs Workouts and Advice podcast where we answer fan questions, too. And you can find me at Dr. Crafty on YouTube, and we just released a season finale of a show that I write and voice act for, and um, it was a My Hero Academia theme, which is very exciting. So, yeah, go check that out. And, um, of course, you can find us here, Kirby Productions, uh, Perpetually Ajar, (laughs) la-da-da-da-da, but mostly follow me on Twitter if you want to see any, like, silly stuff. I'm always on Twitter. I have a problem. It's always, (laughs) it's basically just me and Katie screaming about Weiss and Winter. 
Like it's really true. Like I <laughs> or Penny I, sometimes. I scream about a lot of stuff, but w- but Weiss is always on my Twitter because I'm just always like thirsty. I mean, for my she's girl. best girl. Like she really is. She is best girl. I can't even do the voice right now. Huh? It's okay. Weishni. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay, <laughs> Katie. You don't need to be Weiss uh, right now. It's okay. Uh, Let sucks. her sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Let wife sleep. Weiss, Weiss Let needs her a have nap. a nap. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Uh, Bo, just say something funny. Oh, my life. Same. See you next week, guys. See ya. Mm-hmm.